As a recently passed out doctor, I know how stressful the final MBBS examination is. The clinical component is equally important and stressful. As medical students, we have had more than three years of extensive training in history taking and examination. At the end, it is only a single long case and four short cases we, where we get the final assessment in the subject of medicine. So today, we are going to discuss how to improve the performance in the long case at the final MBBS examination. Today with me, I have Dr. Chamara Dalugama, a consultant physician and a senior lecturer in medicine who is an examiner in the final MBBS examination in Peradeniya as well as in most of the faculties of the country. So my first question is, is it essential to pass the clinical component to pass the subject of medicine? Well, thank you Kavishka and good morning. And let me first welcome all the medical students for this discussion. And I totally agree with you, final MBBS is one of the most stressful exams that we have ever experienced. The reason behind that is, it assesses a very broad area of knowledge within a short period of time. So coming back to your question. Passing the clinical component in final MBBS in medicine is essential to pass or to secure overall pass in medicine. You need to score more than 50% for your clinical component which comprises one long case and four short cases and at the same time you need to have an overall mark that is clinical plus theory more than 50%. My next question is if a student is having a sound knowledge in the subject of medicine, will it guarantee a passing clinicals? Well, that's a difficult question, but the answer is unfortunately no, because in the loan case, it's not only the knowledge that we assess. What we assess in the loan case is how a student approach to a patient and how the student will extract the relevant information from the patient and present it in a very meaningful and a sensible way. So. It's rather the knowledge, it's an art. So taking a loan case is an art that students should master. So this will not come with by taking just a couple of loan cases. So a student has to take as many as possible loan cases and in fact they need to present it to somebody else as well. Because sometimes we see students take many loan cases but they never present it to anyone. So they hardly know what their deficiencies are. And it is very dangerous that if, if the only loan case that you present is in the final MBBS exam. Therefore, it is not only the knowledge that we test. Could you tell us what are the common loan cases and how they are selected for the exam? Okay. So to tell you what are the common loan cases, you know, common cases are common. So that is what we usually see in the board. So as students doing the professorial appointment, this will be the patients that you will be taking histories in your day-to-day -day work. So usually when we select a patient for a loan case, it is not the disease that we are mainly concerned about. It is the patient. So if there is a patient with some common medical problems and if the patient can narrate you a good story without confusing the candidate, if the patient can present a sensible story, that will be an ideal loan case for the final MBBS exam. Therefore, we never go by the disease. We go by the patient, we talk to the patient and we see whether the, the patient can present a good history so that patient will be selected. And let me tell you what happened in the exam day. So there will be two examiners who will be assessing the candidate. So one will be most of the time from the department itself, the internal examiner and there will be an external examiner. You may know him because probably have worked with him when you are doing your peripheral appointment or the external examiner may be from another university. So these two examiners will come in the morning and will see this patient. So these, this patient will be seen by both examiners individually. So they will see the patient, they will take a detailed history and examine the patient. And at the end, the two examiners will talk to each other and calibrate the loan case. So this calibration is an important thing that will happen for each and every loan case that we give for the exam. So during the calibration, the two examiners will agree upon 
essential things in the history to pass the candidate. Say for instance, if you have a diabetic patient and in the history the patient has had a major hypoglycemic attack and patient has a poor vision which affects his insulin injection technique and then patient has significant social, uh, social issues. So this will be considered as essential things that the medical student should pick up in the loan case. So there will be five or six essential components that we will mark as okay should student should pick up in the history. The same thing applies to the examination. So both examiners have examined the patient individually and they will have few common physical signs which are very obvious as essential things to pass. So these physical signs will be very solid physical signs. We might not consider a mild tinge of icterus or a mild pallor as essential to pass thing. But if the patient has deep jaundice, if the patient is severely pale or if the patient has a peripheral neuropathy with lower limb ulcers, those things will be essential components in the examination. Similarly, the two examiners will agree upon a common set of problems that the medical student should appreciate at the end of the loan case. So that is how the calibration happens. Okay, I think it's very clear and my next question is what areas are assessed in the exam? Right, so before that uh, Kavishka, let me tell you the timing about the loan case. So the timing is we give 40 minutes for the loan case with the patient. So it is not only to take the history and examination but within that 40 minutes we expect the student to prepare himself or herself for the discussion. So you have to take the history, you have to examine the patient, you have to make the necessary documentation and you have to prepare a summary and a problem list and you should have some idea how you are going to investigate this patient and manage this patient. So this whole 40 minutes is given for that purpose. And at the end of the 40 minutes, you will be directed to your two examiners and with the examiner, you will be having another 20 minutes for the discussion. Okay, now coming back to your question, what are the areas that we assess in the loan case? Okay, so at the end of this discussion, I will show you a marking scheme, a model marking scheme, how we mark the student. But first, I will go through each component of the assessment. So the first component is the history. Actually, from various components, history carries the largest bulk of marks. So in the history, actually what we expect the student is to identify the theme of the patient. So in the loan case, don't go with a predetermined mind. Okay, I'm going to take a history of a patient with cirrhosis. Or I'm going to take a history of a patient with a myocardial infarction. But go with an open mind. Find out what's the presenting complaint of the patient. The patient might tell, okay, I have come with generalized body swelling. And then we expect you to analyze this symptom methodically. So there can be so many possibilities. So you had to ask first open-ended questions, then closed-ended questions to analyze the symptom. And then at the end of symptom analysis, you will have some differential diagnosis. Then you can ask further questions to find out things for and things against each of your differential diagnosis. So then you will be able to narrow down your differential diagnosis to one or two. Say for instance, this particular patient I talked to, you, a person with generalized body swelling. So he has come with edema and when you ask in the history, he says that he has dark urine. He says he has yellowish discoloration of eyes and you find that he is a heavy ethanol consumer. So your differential diagnosis will narrow down to most probable diagnosis of chronic liver cell disease. Likewise, you ask about the symptom and analyze it methodically. And then the other important thing is after taking, after analyzing the symptom and after coming with the refer, coming to a diagnosis, you have to think about the risk factors and etiologies. So if it's a cirrhotic patient, you have to ask about ethanol, you have to ask about drug, autoimmune causes, chronic infections, etc. And then you need to think about the possible complications. Say for instance, whether the patient has had any GI bleed, whether the patient has had any history of spontaneous bacterial peritonitis, like ones. And at the end of the history, the social history is again equally important. But unfortunately, when we see the students present the social history, what we see is that they present a very stereotyped, very typical history format for the social history. Right? So they talk about how many rooms in the house and whether there are toilet facilities 
and they, whether they have beds at home, but sometimes the current presenting complaint or the differential diagnosis that you are going to entertain in this patient will have no bearing for these aspects. Therefore, social history should be taken with some common sense. The simplest way I teach is like, okay, so identify what the problem of the patient and then see because of the current medical problems, what are the things patient can do and what are the things patient can't do and then analyze how this has affected the patient's normal routine. If he is a person who is doing a job, how badly the job is affected. Likewise, so always make sure that you don't follow a typical format for social history for each and every patient, but you listen to the patient and think sensibly, use some common sense before making the social history. So at the end of the history, the next component is the examination. So in the examination, we don't check your examination techniques in the long case. That is why we have short cases. So you can examine the patients, but what we check in the exam is whether you have picked up the essential physical signs and whether you have picked up important positives and important negatives. It's not only the positive physical signs. Say for instance, a patient with shortness of breath Picking up that patient does not have bilateral and inspiratory fine crepitations will be important negative in the examination. Okay, I think it's very clear. Another common difficulty among medical students is making the summary and the problem is. So, can you tell us more about that? Yes, so at the end of history and examination, in the own case, we tend to ask an updated summary from the student. But what we commonly observe is the students try to make a summary then and there during the discussion by turning the pages of the booklet. So it gives a very negative impression in the examiner's mind. So it's very important in that 40 minute period where you take the history and exam do the examination, always spend a couple of minutes to have an update summary written in your booklet. Because the, the patient summary will be very important to carry out the rest of the discussion. And then coming back to the problem list. It is extremely important to have a good set of problems because most of the time your problem list will direct where we are going to discuss about the investigations and the management. And most of the time what we find is the problem lists the students present are a set of symptoms or physical signs, right? So you can't have problems like body swelling, malina or anemia. I mean the problem should be made in a, such a way that you incorporate your history, your examination findings together. Say for instance, this particular patient we discussed earlier who has come with generalized body swelling with icterus. So your problem would be a patient with generalized body swelling with yellowish discoloration of eyes in the background of heavy ethanol consumption, something like that. So then we can have differential diagnosis for this problem and we can ask how you would investigate and how would you manage this problem. So always have spend some time at least couple of minutes to have a good set of problems and then that will help to streamline the rest of the discussion. Okay, in the long case discussion examiners commonly ask how you would investigate this patient. Yeah. How can a student tackle this question? Yes, so that's a common, I mean that's a question that we always ask. So at the end of your problem list we pick up one problem and we'll ask, okay, how would you investigate this patient? And always it's important that you talk about this particular patient that you have taken the history and examined, right? Because we don't need the textbook description or textbook list of investigations you would do for a particular illness. Say for instance, if your patient is having chronic liver cell disease, the, when we ask what are the investigations you would do we don't expect you to rattle out a set of investigations you do for cirrhosis. But we want you to tell your patient, say Mr. Sirisena, who has cirrhosis and who is a manual laborer in the hospital at the moment, what investigations you will do. Right? So that's again very important. So what about the overall presentation of the long case? Does that carry marks as well? Yes. So overall presentation of the long case again carries a fair amount of marks because it is very important and the examiners expect the student to have some confidence in what they present. 
So this overall presentation, the assessment of the presentation begins at the time you enter into the uh, examination room, right? So the way you come, the way you dress, whether you have the, the way you have shaved and combed your hair, and the way you greet the examiner, all these things matter when it comes to the presentation. And most of the time when the student present the history, we find that they are not confident with what they are telling. So that gives a negative impression to the examiner. And at the same time, some students tend to just look at the booklet and read what they have written. They hardly make any eye contacts with the examiner. So again, that is not good. So what we expect is student to be very confident, relaxed and look at the examiner, build up a good rapport and present what they have found from the patient. And again, when we ask about the questions, it is very important that you answer to the point and then take important nonverbal clues the examiner will give you to correct yourself. Right? Sometimes you might mistakenly go to an area which, which is not conversant, which you are not conversant with. So you should try to avoid this sort of a thing. Right? So you can direct the examiner to areas that you are very conversant and carry out a very good discussion. Okay, a last question. How these areas are marked? In other words, what percentage of marks will be given to these components what we have discussed? Yes, Kanishka. So, I think in the screen you can see a marking scheme, a model marking scheme. So, when we mark, we usually mark out of 10 and each component will be multiplied by different numbers. Therefore, the history usually carries 25% of your overall mark given for the long case and your examination carries 20 marks and then your differential diagnosis will carry another 15 marks and for investigations and management again we give 15 marks each and finally the overall presentation of the case carries 10 marks which makes ultimately 100%. So again there's something very important to note that the history and examination alone will carry the largest sum of marks. It is almost 45% out of 100. But what we commonly see is sometimes students, they keep on presenting the history and examination until 15 minutes out of 20 minute period. Then we will have only 5 minutes for the rest of the components. So we have to discuss about differential diagnosis, investigations, management and sometimes we run out of time because of that. So always try to sort of manage your time when you are presenting the loan case. Try your best to finish presenting the loan case, the history and examination and a summary within 10 minutes. So we have ample time to have a very good discussion with regard to investigations, management and then further follow up of the patient. Okay, that brings us to the end of our discussion. I would like to thank Dr. Chamara Dalgoma for this valuable discussion and I am sure that all participants have immensely benefited. We look forward for a similar discussion on improving the performance in short cases in medicine as well. Thank you very much. Thank you, guys.